Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Rocket H Woodshop. My name is Drew Short. Now, for those of you that are doing woodwork on a custom basis for clients, know the value of being able to show your client what their project is going to look like before you even sign on the dotted line. And SketchUp is a valuable tool when it comes to be able to do that so the client is more at ease with what they are signing for. Now there's a lot of things that I've learned the hard way with SketchUp and I'm willing to pass that information and knowledge to you so you don't have to learn the same way I did. So I'm going to take you inside my computer right now so you can actually see how to make a rail and style type setup with profiles just like your router would carve on the pieces so you can actually show your client exactly what it's going to look like. But before I take you into my computer right now go ahead and click that subscribe button Click the notification bell right along with that. It'll notify you anytime that I upload a video regarding SketchUp or build processes of a project or maybe even just some top five things you want to know about a woodworking business. And hey, don't forget to check out the social media accounts that I have and you'll be able to see any behind the scenes footage that goes on right here in the shop. So now let's hop into SketchUp. Okay, so we're going to start by making a template real quick with my rectangle tool. So I'm going to start down here at the origin, turn my rectangle function on, and I'm just going to drag out here into space randomly and type in 14 comma 0.75 and that's going to give me a 14 inch long piece that's three quarters of an inch thick and I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to push pull this up 14 inches tall. So we're going to make a 14 inch square door that's three quarters of an inch thick. Now it will be frame and panel. So I'm going to drag it up like this and type in 14 and enter. And that was just with the push pull function. If you've seen my prior videos, uh, you know how to operate a lot of these functions by now. If you haven't checked those videos out, I suggest you go back and do that. Just click the links down in the description or the cards that are at the top right hand corner of the screen and it will take you to those videos and playlists. So now we've got our template. I'm going to make that a group by triple clicking on it and highlighting it blue. Now you can do that also by clicking on the top left hand corner and just covering it all up and it will highlight it as well. And then right click and make a group. So now this is our template. This is not permanent. This is just to give us a guide uh, for the thickness as well as the height and width. Okay. So I'm going to draw some lines to establish how wide my styles and rails need to be. And in this video, we're going to show you how to make your style first with the uh, cope and stick profile, which is the round over profile that we are going to do because it's the easiest to do. Um, so I'm going to start with my tape measure function. Turn it on with the T on your keyboard or at, up at the top. Uh, in the toolbar, just click on the tape measure, and we're going to start here at the right-hand side of the square template, and click and drag left. Make sure you're on the red axis, not the green or blue. Make sure it's red, and type in 2.25, which is the typical width of a rail and style. Do the same thing on all edges, 2.25. Now we have established the layout of the rails and styles, and I'm just going to do one style to start with, and it's the longest portion of a cabinet door. So I'm going to turn the rectangle function on, click in this top corner where the intersection line meets the template, and then drag to the bottom right hand corner of your template and drop. Okay, now push pull that function or push pull that rectangle out by turning the push pull function on. Click on that area and type in 0.75 and enter. Now make this a component so it separates it from everything else just by triple clicking on it and highlighting everything blue and type G on your keyboard or you can right click and uh, do make component. Give it a name of style and enter. So once that's named style, you now have your layout. So we need to lay out the profile, which is going to accept not only the panel, but give you the round over look that meets the panel from the face of the 
style itself. So using my tape measure function, we're going to start from the face edge and we're going to draw a 16th inch line away from the face, which is going to give me the bead profile. Now the round over profile, which is next in line, we're going to draw from that 16th line and draw a quarter inch line. So start from here, type in one slash four after you've clicked and drop. Now the groove that is going to be the panel groove, we're going to draw another quarter inch because that's typically what a router bit will make is a quarter inch wide groove. But it's also going to be three eighths of an inch deep. So from the inside edge face, draw three eighths of an inch by typing three slash eight after you've clicked from this line and draw over and drop. Now the round over is a quarter inch radius. So we can't use this line as reference. So we have to draw another line that's only a quarter of an inch deep here. So the layout, the way it's going to work is the bead here, the round over here, and the groove for the panel here. So before we make any uh, changes, we need to go into the component. So triple click on the style, and using the lines we just made, we're going to zoom in a little bit closer so we can see everything. Just turn your line function on, draw your 16th bead line right there, and then hit escape to get out of that function. Turn your rectangle function on and draw the groove starting at this intersection line. Click, drag all the way over to the furthest intersection and drop. So now you can see they are separated. Okay, now we need to do the uh, quarter inch radius profile. So we're going to come over here to the arc function in the top left hand corner. And I'm going to start from that point right there because I want the circle to be drawn in this direction. So my pivot point is right here. So click on that intersection, come out here to the next point and click again. That will establish your uh, rotation point and then drag all the way over to that point and drop. Okay, so we've now laid out the lines for the profiles. Now we just need to push and pull them out of the way. So push pull function on, let's take the groove all the way out. We're gonna drag it all the way down to the bottom edge and drop. Same thing for that profile, click, drag all the way down to the bottom edge and drop. Okay. Now just get rid of your guidelines by coming up here to edit and delete guides or use your shift D, which we set up in prior videos, which gets rid of guides. And as you can see, we now have a style. So we're going to just copy that real quick by just highlighting it, do not go into it. Turn your move function on, click option or command on, uh, or not command, but control on a computer for Windows and then just drag it out here in space. Now we're on the red axis line and I want this profile to flip to the other side so we're going to flip it along the red axis. So right click, flip along and components red. That will flip the component around on the red axis to where now the profile is facing the direction it needs to be so we're going to drag it back into the template popping it to that corner and drop it. Okay, this part one video on creating rails and styles, this is how to create the style with the profile, and that was pretty easy to do. The hard part is going to be making the rail, which is why I wanted to split this up into two parts. So give this a shot so you can get uh, up to speed on making the rails and styles, uh, and that way, whenever we come back for the rail itself, you'll be ready to go. Well guys, I hope that shed some light on the part one of this video so you can actually see how to make those profiles just like your frame and panel bits would make on your router. Now stay tuned because I am going to show you how to do the rail that will have not only the positive profile on the inside of the door, but the negative profile that accepts that style on the side and uh, you'll be able to see the actual rail and style set up together. And then on part three, I'll take you through how to make the panel either be flat or raised. So guys, thanks for joining me on this particular tutorial and be sure and tune in on the next one 
and I will see you on the next video. One, two, three, boom!